big blue Buddha. The mountain is the big blue Buddha. Yeah. Like this one. How many of you all know what this big blue Buddha is? Oh, so a big blue Buddha like that. The blue Buddha is the, is the medicine Buddha. Ooh, okay. The medicine Buddha. It's called the medicine Buddha. And the Tibetan for the medicine Buddha, the Sanskrit is Baishadja Guru. And the Tibetan is Menla, which is the name of this place. And uh, uh, the medicine Buddha is a, it's sort of a strange mixture of myths that the Mahayana Buddhists have. That uh, there were seven brothers in another universe billions of aeons ago. And those seven brothers scanned the future and the past and the present and so forth. And they all became Buddhas, all seven brothers. And then they scanned all the future and the past and they said, oh, we see in that universe called Saha that the Shakyamuni Buddha is the one who will attain Buddhahood. He will be the fourth Buddha of a thousand Buddhas in that universe, in that or solar system or whatever it is. And then he will he picked the time in that universe when the living beings were most feeble, most most lot of lowly in their aspirations, uh, most tending to sickness and illness, and uh, and therefore they would have a hard time practicing the teaching and also very violent, most most warlike. And therefore, they would be hard to have for them to have a natural lifespan. They only have a lifespan of about a hundred years, and uh, and therefore, Shakyamuni Buddha will have a hard time in that they will not be able to practice well his teaching. So, so we will go there because they'll be distracted by their sickness and etc. So, we will go there at that time, and we will teach the teaching of the Medicine Buddha, and uh, thereby they will learn to heal their sicknesses, and thereby they will be able to put into practice the teachings of Shakyamuni. So then that's sort of one myth about the seven medicine Buddha brothers, and who are, you know, there's eight Buddhas here, and the eighth is Shakyamuni, and the other seven are set those seven brothers. And then one day, Shakyamuni in a certain town in India, I forget the name, uh, he suddenly turned into the medicine Buddha himself. He turned into a big blue Buddha like that. And he changed the whole environment for that particular audience. And the other seven Buddhas, you know, were there. And he was the eighth medicine Buddha. And then all the Hindu gods showed up and the rishis, uh, Vedic rishis showed up and the bodhisattvas and the, and the Buddhist monks. And then he taught the medicine teaching, sort of in a miraculous, and he changed the whole environment so that everyone saw the environment that he turned it into is the one in that first painting. If you can look at that later, the detail of it, that is that the people in that assembly, and of course in the Buddhist uh, literature, the people in these assemblies are always thousands of people, and then there's deities and goblins and dragons and all kinds of people, beings come to attend when the Buddha speaks in those in those um, sort of mythical or magical assemblies where the Buddha teaches. And then everyone had the vision while he was teaching that the whole earth was medicine. And that everything, you know, even the, you know, the metal, wood, you know, I guess even plastic, whatever it is, plants, trees, food, parts of animals, everything was medicine. Even poison was medicine, if you knew how to use it in the combination, whatever, you know. So they suddenly saw themselves in a, in a field, instead of a field of sort of dangerous, difficult things, they thought, saw themselves in a field of pure medicine. You know, and so they felt like energized in that field, you know. There, there was the vision of the medicine Buddha. And, uh, and then he taught all the, what are called the four tantras, which are four medical tantras, which are... Um, about you know pulse and about the cause of sickness and the 227 leaves, the three trees. You see the three trees in the next three. Those trees are have all the le leaves of the different types of wellness, the constituents of the body, the different humors, so-called humors, which aren't really humors, but anyway, the different elements in the body. And then the other leaves are the different sicknesses that can happen, and then the other leaves are the different therapies 
a third tree. And when you learn Tibetan medicine or Buddhist medicine, you, you memorize those 227 leaves on the, I think 227. I did memorize and I can't even remember the number. 40 years ago, I memorized them. And you have to pass an exam by drawing all the trees and, and locating all the elements. And then those, um, those leaves all connect to the chapters of the th other three tantras, the um, explanatory tantra, the personal instruction tantra, and the further tantra. There's four, three, and then they have surgery and medicine and compounding medicines and picking medicines and, and an analysis, and, uh, that pulse diagnosis and urine diagnosis and other, you know, visual diagnosis and so forth. It's a marvelous, amazing system, actually. And also how the mind is engaged uh, to heal people and so on. Really great. So anyway, that's the, I'm explaining that because the environment here, therefore, <coughs> you know, we were given, the Tibet House U.S. was given this place uh, by someone who was wanted it to be a healing place. And they just, they didn't really know about Buddhist medicine, but they kind of had an intuition Fortunately, that um, that it would be great to invite the Medicine Buddha to America, and so we eventually will have Tibetan doctors here and uh, yogis and things like that, and uh, and Western doctors and uh, acupuncture doctors, all different kinds, and we'll start a review of the medical, the whole thing about what is medicine, you know, and indigenous doctors. You know, native people who know about the herbs and plants that grow here and things like that. That's the that's the vision anyway that we're working. In the meantime, we're talking about the Book of the Dead.